Well, I've just finished installing the runners to the base of the sled, and I'm getting ready to check the fit. But before I get to that, let's take a look at what's gone on so far. Now, the base is really a platform for the sled, so you want it to be flat and stable. So I'm using three-quarter inch plywood. Now, I just started off with a rectangular piece like this. Then to make the sled more maneuverable and lighter, I went ahead and trimmed off the ends. Now, I mentioned before that I was installing runners. Now, you could use wood runners, but wood's going to expand and contract with changes in humidity. So I like to use metal runners like this. No, they don't expand or contract with changes in humidity. And what I really like about them is they're adjustable. They have little nylon screws here in the side. All you have to do is adjust it in and out to get a perfect fit. So let's see how it goes. There we go. What you're looking for is no side to side movement at all, but that it easily slides back and forth. Well, the next thing to add is the blade guard. Now the blade guard does a couple of things. First, it keeps your hands away from the saw blade, and it holds the base of the jig together. Now, the front of the guard has been beveled so the workpiece can be accurately positioned. And in the back, there's a hole, and the hole accepts a dowel that forms a handle. The dowel just slips in like that. Now, to support the either end of the handle, there's a couple of brackets that fit on the end of the dowel. One goes here, one goes here. Now, all I have to do is glue and screw the pieces in place. To get a good fitting miter joint on a frame, you need two things. A perfect 45 degree miter and the opposing pieces have to be exactly the same length. Well, this jig solves both of those problems. It has a fence system that can be tweaked and adjusted so that you can get a perfect 45. And it also accepts a stop so you can make sure that those opposing pieces are exactly the same length. Well, let's take a look at how it all goes together. We started off with a fence blank. That's a piece of hardwood, and there's a small rabbit here. And the rabbit creates a dust relief so that your workpiece can slap right up tight against the fence. There's also a piece of aluminum T-track that's been installed. Now, we're going to need to trim that T-track to a 45-degree miter. So we're going to have to make sure and use a carbide tip saw blade. Now, the carbide is very, very hard, and the aluminum is soft, so it's going to cut through it without any problem. After mitering the ends of the fences, like this, the next step is to install them. Now, I mentioned earlier that the fences can be tweaked or adjusted, and the way that works is that we're going to drill oversized mounting holes. That way, when you attach them with screws, you've got a little bit of wiggle room so that you can tweak the fence to a perfect 45-degree miter. Now, speaking of that, once you have the fences attached, you're going to want to make some test cuts. You're going to make a cut, tweak the fence a little bit, make another cut. Then, once it's all perfect, you go ahead and lock the fences down. And I do that by installing a couple of screws up from underneath. Now, one thing that does happen when you're cutting a miter, sometimes a workpiece will want to slip a little bit, especially as you push it through the blade. The blade's going to want to grab it and pull it. To prevent that, I'm going to use some non-skid tape. Now, this stuff uh, comes in strips. Sometimes it comes in rolls. And it's sold in home centers or hardware stores. And it's actually used on steps to prevent people from slipping. But in this case, we're going to use it to prevent the workpiece from slipping. Well, once you get the grip tape installed, the next step is to add the stop blocks. Now, the stop blocks are just two pieces of wood that are glued and screwed together at a right angle. There's a hole drilled in the back piece, and it accepts a flange bolt like this. Flange bolt fits into the T-track, and then a plastic knob locks everything down. Well, these fences work great if you're mitering small pieces, but what happens if you want to miter long ones? In that case, you might want to use one of these. It's a fence extension. Now, there's a fence blank, just like on the other fence, and a piece of T-track. Really, the only difference is we've added a piece of aluminum angle here, and that allows you to mount the fence. And I will grab a knob, see if we can get that started. There we go. So now, whether you've got small pieces to miter or long pieces to miter, you've got one jig that'll handle them all. Woodsmithplans.com hundreds of professional, high-quality woodworking plans right at your fingertips. Every single plan is presented as an easy-to-download digital package that includes pages of step-by-step -step instructions, full-color photos, illustrations, and exploded views, retail sources for hardware and supplies, plus a cutting diagram and materials list. Many plans offer handy video overviews and guides, Plus, we're proud to offer our plans in both standard and metric. 
Everything is here, from gorgeous heirloom furniture projects to handy shop projects and upgrades, clever, cost-effective storage solutions, as well as weekend projects and accessories that are great for gifts, all fully searchable and categorized for easy browsing. WoodsmithPlans.com, everything you need for building fine woodworking projects.